Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out another AI software. The last time we checked out was Llama and this time we're gonna be checking out something called Alpaca, which is a fine tuned version of Llama that actually follows directions. And this time it actually has a UI similar to what you would find on ChatGPT. So let's check it out. Everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below, including the software and the models that you could download. In particularly, I did have a little trouble running everything, so it wasn't like smooth sailing. I did have trouble finding the correct model to use, even though there was a whole bunch. The software instructions wasn't as complete, so it's not as straightforward to get that working as well. But this time, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you the project first before we get into the installation, because it's just much quicker this way. So the software that we're gonna be using today is called Alpaca Turbo, which gives you this really cool uh, GUI interface. Now there's two versions of this. I'm using the second version, which I think is the newer one versus the one that I actually have on my thumbnail, but it both works. Now, when you load the model originally, um, this is what happens. You need to know that it actually gives you this little time, say model loaded in 3.42 seconds. Um, if you try other models, like other names of or 13B or something like that, and it says loaded model but doesn't give you this time frame, that means it actually didn't load. Also, the other indication that you would know that something did load is if you go into system monitor and your RAM is actually eating up a couple of gigs of RAM. So this one is 6.6 .6 gigs of RAM. And when I start up the system, it's like one point something. So you know that it's actually loaded into the memory. Now I'm gonna leave this up a little, um, this little thing just in case, so you can see the memory. And the CPU usage would pop up to, since I gave it eight cores out of the 16, uh, it would be 50% on CPU usage. So I'm gonna ask it something simple, like my name is Donald, can you remember that? So you gotta kinda give it like commands, and this way you know that it's actually functioning. Now it does take a while. Uh, I mean like 15, 30 seconds maybe per command because it is running off the CPU and it's not doing any GPU uh, compilations. So it does take a little bit. So you see it just came back and it says, my name is Donald, can you remember that? Yes, Donald, I do. So I could actually refer back to this later on in the future and I know that it retained the memory that I needed. So I could ask this anything I want, almost similar to Llama model that we did last time. So I'm gonna ask, um, who was the first person on the moon? Just like last time. It should reply with Neil Armstrong. And again, I'm gonna move this off to the side. I just keep this um, up just so I know it's actually working, but I don't have to. I, I could just minimize this and kind of like leave, let this go. But this way I know at least it's doing something. So the first person to walk on the moon was Neil Armstrong in 1969. That answer is actually a little bit more complete than what we had in the llama model. Keep in mind, I am still using 7B. This is the 7B model. There's 13, 30B, like you could download whatever models you want. Uh, not all of them work, but this seems to be working the fastest. That's why I'm kind of using this for a demonstration. But again, you guys could do whatever you want. Now, I did have a comment on my last video where uh, somebody tested the 30B and I also tested it as well. The 30B makes <laughs> what he said, the 7B and 13B look like village idiots. And it's true. The 30B has so much parameters in there that the answers are actually pretty good. Now, I'm going to give it a more complicated question because I actually did this for my trip to Korea and Japan on ChatGPT. And you can actually ask AI to give you an itinerary to the location that you're going to go to. So I'm going to be like, uh, can you gen uh, create an itinerary? itinerary to, oops, I spelled that wrong, Ugh. Japan for a two-day stay. Now, because I think this is a little bit more taxing on the CPU, uh, this might take a little bit longer to respond, so I'm just going to jump to that point. And here we go. So you can see it's loading in the text. It depends on what kind of activities and sites you would like to visit during the two-day trip. But there's possible itinerary, day one, visit Tokyo, sky tree, the shrine, imperial palace, then take the ride to the river, see all this stuff. Like it's actually giving me pretty good information on what I want to do in Japan. And day two, it'll tell you to start early, go to the bamboo forest, which is actually a pretty good uh, suggestion. The temple again at the old quarters, follow the boat ride to Tokyo Bay, 
and uh, there's a ton of stuff that you can do like you could ask this and it's actually properly responding pretty well now it is done because it just gave me a two-day um, itinerary so it kind of gives me an idea what I wanted to do and I actually been using this formula a lot my sister actually gave me this idea for asking ChatGPT because even though I've been to Tokyo before and I've seen all the sites there's still some certain things that I haven't done and having an AI generate some more information that I need actually works out very well so now that we're done with this question I could go back and say like what is my name and it should reply back with my name is Donald and here's the first error that we already have it didn't actually retain my name and it retained the last story that we were talking about and it kind of just gave me that so these are the bugs that you might find and it's not perfectly proper but we're definitely a step ahead because the progress of these AI models that are uh, relatively given to us through open source is progressively getting better every single day so let's jump into installing the software so you can play around with it on your own. Now there's two ways to get it installed. One is you can run it as a Docker, uh, but that only works on Linux. And the second way is to manually run it. And I'm gonna show you both ways. So here is the GitHub of the actual Alpaca Turbo. And you can see the last time it was updated was 16 hours ago. And let me refresh the website to see. Yeah, 16 hours ago was updated. That's like a day ago. And there's this implementation. Now keep in mind that their latest release was only last week so whatever you're seeing here is actually a lot newer than what their latest release is and you might notice that the version that i have up which is something similar to this is not what they have on their preview so their preview looks exactly like something you would find on chat gpt but the version that i'm actually running is their the gradio implementation and this one gives you that different ui that the one that we were just looking at now I wasn't able to manage to get this working on the latest release, which is this one right here from the Git. Uh, but you can get this version through their older uh, release version five from here. So what I'm gonna do first is basically run this and I'm gonna download that. And this way we have that uh, alpaca.turbo zip. Now to get models, you actually have to go to this website called Hugging Face. Now I'm gonna open a new tab huggingface.co and this is the AI community building the future and if you need models you just click on models and here are a whole set of models that you can use uh, you can filter by name and the model that I'm actually using is Sosaka which is this one alpaca native 4-bit GG ML and you could download this as well um, it actually shows you if you go into settings if you scroll down download the 7b recommended model which is right here that's the same link that I was just about to show you. Another one is Pi3141. I just wasn't able to get any of these models working on Gradio. So your mileage may vary. It might work for you, it might not. I don't, I'm not too sure about it. I'm still learning as I go which model works. And apparently when I was reading their issue, someone did respond how loading the models did require some specific string called the RSTSR, which is not in all the models. And because it's missing that, it won't load properly. Now he did manage to get it to work, but unfortunately he didn't reply with how he got it to work so we could get it to work. So um, the models may vary to see which one does work or does not depending on if this string is available or not. So the version that I'm using does have it. That's why I'm able to get everything working. Jump back into the release version. I'm gonna go over to my folders, uh, pop into downloads, and this is a zip file for Alpaca Turbo. Uh, create a new folder and just call it alpaca t because I have a few other things in there and I am running long space look 512 gigabyte storage and I'm running out of space cut this over to the alpaca t and then we'll extract it here now it's going to have all the files that you need to get this up and running and there is the docker compose file so what you all just need to do is just run docker compose up and it should run everything. Now, before you do that, uh, you do want to put a model here and it runs off a bin file. So download whatever model you have. So say like you have the 7B or whatever it is. I'm going to go to downloads. I'll transfer that over because I do, I do have enough storage for that. So this one, copy, and then go to Alpaca T, go to models, and then I'll just paste that one file, which is the Alpaca 7B Q4. Going back to the terminal itself, we're gonna run docker up. It's gonna download all the images, everything, just to get everything all started. And from here, 
it will give you an IP address, which is 127.0.0.1, which is your local host, 5000. And that's basically all you need to do to get this going. Oops, not 500, 5000. Come on, Butterfingers. And there you go. This gets started. I already have something loaded on our other model. That's why the RAM is taken up. But it does have this one. Just hit change. It's going to load the model. You could see the RAM going up. It says loaded successfully. And in here, this is the chat GPT version. And I just ran it off Docker. Super simple if you're running their release. From here, you could say, my name is Don. Can you remember that? Or you could ask it anything else. But it's going to do its thing. And I'll reply back to like how it was before. So if you like this user interface, uh, you can use this one. Or if you like the other user interface that I was using, um, you could use that one as well. All right, so that's one way of running the Docker version. And it's super simple. I just stopped it because I didn't need to run it anymore. You already saw the demos from before. But yeah, you just have to run that Docker file and it should work right off Linux. Now, the second way that you could do this is I'm gonna just gonna make a dir called temp. You don't have to do this, but I did. And in the temp folder itself, uh, I am gonna git clone this model. So let me get back into here. I'm gonna git clone that. And now I cloned Alpaca Turbo. And in here, uh, we have to go over to radio implementation. And then you could run pip3 install-r requirements. All right, that's the first thing you need. It's gonna install all the requirements, which I already satisfied because I have this pre-installed. Uh, and then you just run Python 3 web UI PY. And it's gonna give me an error because I already have another software running. So you know what? I'm gonna nano this web UI PI and change the port to 8001. This way you could see that I am loading a separate version of the latest version. And I'm gonna go back to Python 3 web UI and there you go. 8001. So let's do 127.0.0. There you go. So there we are loading the Git clone version. And here you could play around with all the settings. And obviously this is not my name. I mean, this is my home directory, but this is not where I have my stuff. But this is where you would change all the settings. And this is how you would get this version up. Again, your mileage may vary and definitely check out their issue boards because they're repairing stuff all day long and a lot of stuff is getting fixed on the daily. Just keep looking at their GitHub every day or fork it or star it just so you know that if there's updates, you could follow along with it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I did have a lot more fun with this one versus the first version because it now gives you a GUI that I could actually reach from other computers and I don't have to like sit in front of this one to play around with it. And I could load different models just to test. And again, if you could find a 30B or 13B or 65B to load in, you're gonna get way better responses. Also, if you take a look at some of the models, they get updated, like they're uh, trained almost a day or two ago. So their information is actually pretty relevant and it's very, very new. So if you play around with their models and you find one that works for you, you're gonna have a very satisfying reply. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. I will try to answer them. But again, check out their issue boards for all the questions. Uh, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.